Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. Today we're gonna to talk about the Cori cycle, what it does, the physiology of it, and how all that in gluconeogenesis works in a muscle cell. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's give a little bit of background on what we're looking at here. If we eat a donut, and we digest that donut through our bloodstream, and then that donut becomes little pieces of blood sugar. We call that blood glucose. So this is what we're looking at here. This is our bloodstream, and we can see blood glucose floating around. Now the blood glucose can move out of the bloodstream through some form of transporter. So this might be, for example, a GLUT4 insulin-mediated transporter that would allow it into an adipose tissue, or in this case, a muscle cell. So this orange box is a muscle cell. And as we can see here, this is labeled sarcoplasm because all this stuff, just the area that we're floating around in, would be considered the sarcoplasm. So what you can see here is that glucose molecule, it's a six carbon molecule and it just went through a transporter and into the muscle cell. So now we had a glucose molecule, we went and put it into the cell and now we can go through the process here of glycolysis. And glycolysis is just what it sounds like glycolysis, splitting a glucose. So it was a six carbon molecule and we split it in half and now it's two pyruvate molecules, three carbons each. So now we have two pyruvate molecules. So here, based on the environment of the cell, we may take that pyruvate and go into the mitochondria and enter the Krebs cycle. And that is one route if there's oxygen available and there's mitochondria available to continue to metabolize that pyruvate, that's an option. But let's just say we're running quickly, we're doing anaerobic activity, we're taking that pyruvate and we're gonna turn it into lactate. And now here's where we really introduce the Cori cycle, is when we take that lactate, we leave the muscle cell, go into the bloodstream, transport through the bloodstream, and then over to the liver. Now, this is one way that gluconeogenesis can occur, is going from lactate out of the muscle cell, through the bloodstream, to the liver, turning that lactate back into pyruvate, and then turning that pyruvate back into glucose that can then be used for energy. So this Cori cycle is what's occurring in the liver, and it's one form of gluconeogenesis. So real quick, what is gluconeogenesis? Let's just break that word down. Gluco, meaning, standing for glucose, neo, meaning new, and genesis, meaning creation. So we can think of any time we see gluconeogenesis as the creation of new glucose. And in the case of the Cori cycle, that new glucose molecule was created from the lactate that left the muscle cell, went through the bloodstream, and then to the liver. That's how gluconeogenesis works in the liver, and that's really what we're talking about when we say the Cori cycle. But you still may have a few extra questions. One question that comes up, is this the only way to clear lactate? And the answer for that is no. Lactate can actually be cleared just in the muscle fiber itself. So without actually going through the bloodstream and through the liver, the muscles can actually clear lactate themselves, specifically the type one muscles that are highly oxidative and have high mitochondrial density. Another question you might have is how long it takes to clear lactate. So after an anaerobic or a hard interval workout, lactate will still typically clear within one hour. And it's actually cleared faster by active recovery. So for example, doing a light jog or a walk at about 60 to 65% of max heart rate, tends to clear lactate faster than just passive recovery. Another question you might have is what else goes through gluconeogenesis? So in addition to lactate, we could also put glycerol or amino acids through the process of gluconeogenesis, and those molecules as well could provide us with energy to then use through the process of glycolysis. Another question you might have is how this interacts with the endocrine system and the hormones. Now, the Cori cycle is largely stimulated by a drop in blood glucose because our body wants to continue to have a supply of glucose in the bloodstream to fuel the brain and the muscles. But in addition to that drop in blood glucose, things like cortisol, glucagon, the catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine, thyroid hormone or growth hormone could all be involved in the process of stimulating gluconeogenesis. So the Cori cycle is really just one process that the liver does the liver is also important for excreting things like cholesterol hormones and drugs from the bloodstream, as well as aiding in the storage of nutrients. For example, breaking down polymers of glycogen into glucose, which can then go through the bloodstream. So just to review, the Cori cycle occurs in the liver. It takes lactate, turns it into pyruvate, and then into glucose, which can then go back into the bloodstream to then go through glycolysis. 
All right, guys, I hope that video has been helpful for you. If it has, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to learn more about exercise science and kinesiology and strength conditioning, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.